I'm always a bit wary of introductions because I was asked to do a presentation some, quite some time ago and the uh, illustrious uh, speaker introduced me and told me, uh, gave everyone a yours truly of uh, his life he was, which included a farming background, of, I don't know how many years, 15 years since I retired from farming. But it was a mixed broad acre farming here in the Mallee at Karunda and it involved working in a ADC intensive piggery and the speaker said, oh, and he's pretty used to shoveling pig manure. And now he's working for the government. <laughs> and one of my ex-mates yelled out the back, and he's still shoveling it. <laughs> so so <laughs> it's been a bit of a life change. But um, what I am truly committed to is helping farmers, you guys, uh, control pests. So one of our important integral parts of uh, Landscape SA is pest control, and that's pest weeds, pest animals. And uh, in the absence of Scott, who puts in a big apology, because I'm not sure if he's come down with COVID, but he's uh, feeling unwell today. So that's Scott Hutchins from Cambrai. Uh, it was just going to give a bit of a, a more of a local issue of uh, some pest control work that's been undertaken in the area uh, recently and then coming up. And it was, uh, you saw in your flyers there, the four Ps, uh, prickly pests uh, in, in your patch. Um, so there's been some work done on a puntia species or prickly pears or cactuses or whichever you want to call them and he's uh, promoting the biocontrol technique of uh, controlling cactuses. Uh, so there's been some very good work over a number of many years by past and current employees who have had great success in this, uh, in this technique. So there's, there's a number of biocontrol cochineal uh, bugs that attack and do a very good job of attacking uh, all the varied species of apuntias. So there's a number of them, both the species and the cochineal, and the release sites that we've put them on has, has been nothing short of phenomenal, really. Uh, dropping prickly pear plants that are as tall as the tennis court nets, and some of them are probably covering half a tennis court in size, uh, over a few years, and only a few years, uh, basically down to ground level to a stage where you can nearly burn them. So it's pretty encouraging. Um, been a lot of work done to source these bugs, find out if they are actually suitable to our environment, which they are. So you know, you don't get disheartened if they don't take to a uh, prickly pear straight away, because they will over time. Um, so that's been some good work done there. And locally, promoting heavily boxthorn control. Everyone knows what a boxthorn is, not one of those prickly pests. Uh, so uh, along roadsides, we've been uh, doing some um, campaigns and a bit of uh, you know, free spraying, so to speak. Um, but there's always a sting in the tail, as uh, one day later on you might get asked to uh, chip in and help in yourself. So we've got some equipment that's available. There's some spray trailers that you can have a lend of. Uh, you put the chemical in it and you do the work, but it's a, a very good trailer. There's a couple of them and it makes life you know, a lot easier for you guys. So I won't chew, chew up too much time, but in the relation to pest weeds, uh, to cut it short, has anyone heard of Feathertop Roads grass? Yeah. <laughs> and have you got it? You got it, Andrew? It, have you heard of it, but you haven't got it? So, look, it, it, I call it a new, new weed in the area. Um, it's probably been here for a while. It's in, I call it prickle land, the river land. It's got every weed that you can think of. It's been up there for quite a while. Um, if you travel the Northern Expressway from Adelaide out to the Barossa, there's pretty much nothing but feathertop roads. So don't get it confused with feathertop grass or roads grass. It's feathertop roads. You know, I, I would have loved to have brought a plant with me today, but all the ones I've sprayed around the Karuna Township are looking pretty sick. Um, so it's a, probably one good thing, hasn't got a prickle. That's really good. Um, but it's reasonably invasive, awfully tough to control. Um, I think the agronomists have gone. I think I saw Belly here before, but I reckon he's gone. Um, I've seen it from Pinaroo to up the freeway. And when you've got the same contractors managing roadsides for Downer, Diptye, whoever, that are, spray that are slashing the roadsides or the freeways on the Northern Expressway, and those same contractors are coming out the freeway to Tail and Bend, then hello. It's, uh, and it's also on the Mallee Highway in a couple of spots. I'm a bit vigilant on it, um, get onto it. But it's got a unique characteristic of 
um, taking root from its lateral stem. So we all know what a node on a cooch grass does. Takes, no, takes root, off it goes, takes root, off it goes. These nodes are up the stem. So if you know what a false caper plant looks like, nice and curved and outreaching. So about every inch and a half you've got a node. And when that stem or lateral lowers to the ground, hits the ground, it'll take root and, and form another plant. And so on and so on and so on. So it loves roadsides, but it's took the eastern states in New South Wales, northern New South Wales, and they're highly fertile, highly wet, 20 tonne a hectare crop stuff. Feather top roads is a big problem. Some are grower, um, but yeah, chemical control is difficult and if not expensive. But it can be done. It, there's, there's, uh, I think Bullabarra guys have had it up there for a number of years and the double knock system works quite well. So being a summer grower, I guess in our Mallee environment, we take out all weeds, take no prisoners, so it's okay. And I guess if you load up your boom spray with six adjuvants or six actives or whatever, one of them's probably gonna kill it. But not good when it gets you know, past five leaf stage. So you've got to be good at spotting it when it's, when it's young and it's pretty innocent when it's young. So it is a broader leaf, a bit like barley grass, I suppose, as opposed to a narrow leaf like rye grass. So you've got good target to hit there. Um, but yeah, yeah, amazapurs, cofendratone, uh, group eyes, are probably pretty good at it. Uh, selective grass selectives when it's young, and I'll say young, two to three to five leaf max. Um, but above that, I got out of control in the Croonan Township and I put an uh, unlabeled rate of like, I think I put the water with the Roundup, I reckon, and it, um, it didn't work. So I think it was 10 litres per 100 and it was only had a few small plants to, a few small areas to spray, but it did not look at it, didn't change the colour of it. So you don't want to let it get out of control in your, in your cropping phase. So that's just probably a bit of a scary one. It's a, not a declared weed, so that makes it a little bit uh, managing for us um, that we can't enforce control. Um, to get it to be a declared list, you have to go through lots and lots of hoops. And I'm in the process of hurdling through them now. But it'll take time and I hope it wouldn't take as long as gazanias. How long have gazanias been around? A long time declared a couple of years ago. So I wouldn't want to see that. Um, so that's probably the long and the short of the pesty side of it. Um, and I think Hannah was probably going to uh, uh, touch on our policy side of it as well. But there's a few brochures over there. Um, and also, I'll probably, oh, here we go. Big reminder, I knew there's something else. Regarding pests, uh, your farmers may have seen a flyer, poster, come out in your mail promoting our fox boat distribution days. So from about now on for the next month, we do coordinated fox baiting programs. Uh, so contact us, there's a car, there's my card's over there, some details on that flyer. Take a flyer and come to a nominated um, location and pick up a subsidised fox boat. And nothing's free. Um, and we're doing that over the next month or so. And now is also a good time to do rabbit tear control too. So summertime's always the uh, best time for that. So come and see us for that. How many rabbits for dry sheep equivalent? Free beer going here. Don't know? Somewhere between 12. Good old dozen. Yep, yeah, 12 rabbits is a dry sheep equivalent. So if you haven't got any rabbits, I suggest you go and look for them. Mm -hmm.